Hello, you're welcome today. I, I just believe God has a word for you today. I believe many of us are in some kind of wilderness coming out of something into another thing. If that's you, this word is for you. The wilderness can be anything. It can be a difficult situation where you can't find your way through and you're just trying to figure out why am I here? And what is this leading to? If that's you, be calm, be still. God is up to something. God is up to something. I can assure you that God is up to something. Or maybe you just come out of something and you're getting into another thing. It's some form of wilderness too. You don't know how this is this new dimension is going to be. You don't know how this new position is going to be. You don't know how this new direction is going to be. I assure you God is up to something. God is up to something. You see, God never wastes anything. There is no experience that you've had that is a waste when it comes to God. God never wastes any experience. God never wastes any adventure. God does not waste any time. God is not a time waster. There is no wasted time in God. In fact, God is a redeemer of time. He's a redeemer of things, purpose, and in God, some things that look like a waste of time is actually God behind the scenes trying to redeem something. And many times when God is trying to redeem something, it feels like we're in the wilderness. It feels like we can't find our way through and we just in a place, we're just in a place where we don't understand how we're going to move forward from there. Anytime he feels like you're stuck, anytime he feels like you're you can't find your way through. Anytime it feels like every attempt you make to go forward is just hitting a brick wall. Has anybody ever been there? It just feels like you're hitting a brick wall. You try to move forward, you just can't. You, you trying to go to a new dimension, to a new level, and it just feels like there's a brick wall in front of you and you can't go past it. And, and you're wondering, why is it that everything I'm trying to do is not working? Why am I stuck here? Why is it that I can't just move forward from where I am? You sense inside of you that God has something for you, but you just can't seem to lay hold of it. You just can't seem to grab it. Now, first of all, you got to understand that a wilderness is a place of transition. So, you are in a place where you are transiting from one thing to another. And in that place, there will be questions. In that place, there will be question marks. In that place, there will be blurry or blurred vision, which means your, your ability to see is limited. You can't see beyond a certain point. <laughs> you can't see the big picture. You can't see the whole process that you are in. Like a friend was sharing with me recently, you, there are times you want to go to a place, somewhere you get in the car and you put the address in your GPS navigator, maybe from your phone, and it tells you how long it's going to take you to get there. So you can... So you know upfront how long it's going to take you to get there. And then you start the trip. But one feature that often comes with it is the ability to zoom in or out on that screen. When you zoom out, you can see the entire trip. You can see the blue lines on the GPS navigator telling you where you're going to go through and all of that. So it kind of gives you a synopsis, a compressed map of your trip to where you're going. 
But we don't often get that opportunity when walking with God. It often often seems like we are only in the zoomed in position, that we only can see where we are at, but we don't know the entire map. We don't see the entire journey. But, and because of that, we have only limited information. So the wilderness is a place of limited information about your journey, about your process, about your calling, about your life, about your life's journey. That can really be a difficult place to be. But one thing to realize in the wilderness, first of all, is that you have to realize that God knows where you are. God knows exactly your location. God knows, God has your exact coordinates where you are. He knows exactly what position you are in his plan, in his master plan for your life. Let me say that again. God knows exactly where you are in his master plan for your life. First of all, realize he has a master plan. And he knows where you are in it. So, that should gladden your heart because you are not lost. You're not lost. <laughs> You're not lost. You know, sometimes with the navigator, you can be going somewhere on a trip and you driving have you been driving somewhere and it feels like you're lost you know you're driving and it just feels like i don't even know where i am i am lost when god has called you out of something into something sometimes you feel lost sometimes you feel displaced sometimes you feel disoriented I give you an example of Moses where at one point growing up he felt like you all know the story he felt like he had a burden in his heart he's called to be a, a, to liberate the children of Israel to be a deliverer who God is going to use to save to help to bring his people out of slavery but one thing leads to another and he found himself in exile. He found himself removed from the place. He, he sees himself removed from a place where he had always, all his life, thought he was called to. He felt, he sees himself removed from something that he all his life had thought that he was called to do. So he's, he feels lost. But it was in the place where he felt lost that God processed him. It was in the place where he felt lost that God refined him. It was in the place where he felt lost that God perfected him. It was in the place that he felt lost that God prepared him. It was in the place that he felt lost that God groomed him. That God molded his character. That God pruned him. That God repositioned him. And that God trained him up for his plan and purpose. And when God sent him back then later to Egypt, he was a changed man. He was not the Moses that went to exile. He's older, he's wiser, he's stronger, he's more humble, but he has become tender in the hands of God. He has been molded into another vessel. How God told Jeremiah, arise and go down to the potter's house. It, isn't it amazing that the way to the potter's house is down? 
that when God is molding you, that God, when God is working on something, it's it looks like it's sometimes it's going down. Isn't it amazing that in God sometimes or many times, most times the way up is the way down. So God took Jeremiah down to the brother's house in a vision to show him how he's molding something. So let me just read it to you in Jeremiah chapter 18. Uh, the word of the Lord uh, from verse 1 the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words then I went down to the potter's house and beheld he wrought a work on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was marred listen to that was marred in the hand so he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make there's just a lot in this in this to unpack but i i don't want to read too far so i can bring out what i need want to bring out verse 3 again says then i went down to the potter's house and beheld he wrought a walk on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter let me tell you there's a difference between a cl clay being marred just on its own somewhere else or and the clay being marred in the hand of the potter clay can be marred but when it's marred in the hand of the potter it's a different thing clay can be marred but when it's marred in the hand of the potter, there's a purpose to it. Clay can be messed up. But when it's messed up in the hand of the potter, the potter is up to something. That's why it's messed up. It's because the potter is up to something. So it's not just enough to look at the state of the clay. Yes, it's marred. But where is it? It's in the hand of the potter. So don't just look at the state of the clay. Don't just look at the state, the situation. Look at, consider where it is. Consider in whose hands it is. You know, when when you drive by of, on, a, on, a, on a freeway and you see a car that there's steam coming out of the engine of the motor, the doors are open you find a car in that situation you are likely going to want to stop to find out what's going on because that doesn't look normal but when you find the same scenario in a mechanic workshop where the steam is coming out of the the motor of the engine and the doors are open and the same thing you're not going to worry or stop because it is in the workshop of the mechanic it is in the hands of the potter. So when it looks bad on the road, on the freeway, it looks bad. But when it looks bad in the mechanic workshop, it's about it's because it's about to be better. It says, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. So when the clay looks bad on the field, on the streets, it is bad. But when the clay looks bad in the hand of the potter, it's because it is in process. It's in the process of being made into another vessel. It is in the process of being made into something better. It's in the process of being made into something greater. It's in the process of being made into something greater. It is in the process of being made into something bigger. It's in the process of being made into something nicer. It is in the process of being made into something greater. So it's not marred, it's in process. <laughs> it looks marred, it looks bad, but it is in process. Because of whose hands it is in. I like that song that we sing, Christ is my firm, Christ is my firm foundation. 
the solid rock, the rock on which I stand. I build my life on Jesus. He's never let me down. He won't. He says, I still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. Particularly that phrase that says, I, I built my life on Jesus. When you put your life in, when you've put your life in his hands, it may look difficult. Things may look out of sorts, but he's working out something good out of it. He's working something good out of it. It's a process. It says he made it again, though the, the, the clay was marred in the hand of the potter, but he made it again another vessel as it seemed good to the potter. As it seemed good to the potter, not as it seems good to the clay, because the clay doesn't define itself, because the clay does not design itself. The clay is not its own designer. It's the potter who designs, who decides the design of the clay. You don't determine your design. God does according to his desire. Let me say it this way. He designed you according to his desire. He designs you according to his desire. So the wilderness is just a temporary experience. The wilderness is just a temporary place. The, the wilderness is just a place of transition. The wilderness is just a passage into something new. The wilderness is just a temporary holding. You are not going to be where you are now forever. Something is bound to shift. Something is bound to change. <laughs> Something is bound to give way. Just don't give up. The scriptures say, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What's a valley? A valley is a low land between two high places. It's when you've been on a, on, a, on a particular plane and then you had to go down the valley to come out of the valley into a higher place. Your wilderness is just a valley. <laughs> you are coming out of the valley. The, this valley, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but this valley, this valley is a temporary experience. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but this valley is a temporary place. It leads you through the valley of the shadow of death and it brings you out of the other side on the other side better. And you need whatever you learn in the valley is useful when you get back to the plane. <laughs> whatever you saw in the valley was important. That's why God allowed you to go through the valley to come out on the other side to tell your story. Because somebody needs to hear your story. Somebody is going to be encouraged by your story. Somebody is going to be lifted out of their valley because of your valley that you went through. So don't, don't give up in the wilderness. Everyone goes through it. Yeah. Everyone goes through a season of not understanding the purpose. Everyone goes through a season of not being able to change anything that change the things they want to change everybody goes through a season where they feel stuck everybody goes through a season where they can't reach for something that they 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 desire something that they know god has for them yeah everyone goes through a season where they can't just seem to move forward they've done everything but yet nothing has worked out yet it is just a wilderness it is just a temporary place it won't last forever so when god brought moses back to egypt eventually it was at the right time at the right season it's like god has had restored moses so that moses can restore God's people 
in the land that God has given them. Moses is restored so he can restore. Moses is back in Egypt for a purpose. For a purpose. The second coming of Moses to Egypt is not to enjoy the palace and have a nice time and have all the comfort and conveniences of the palace anymore. It is with a purpose. It is with a mission. It is with an assignment. It is with a mandate. This is when Moses finally realized that the wilderness I've been had a purpose in my life after all. That the wilderness I've been through put something in me that nothing else could have been able to put in me. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but God has set you apart so he can refine you. God has set you apart so he can restore you. God has set you apart so he can prepare you. God has set you apart so he can equip you for what he has called you to do. So God is not done with you yet. There are greater heights in front of you. There are greater things ahead of you. God wastes nothing. There is no wasted time in God. None. God wastes no one's time. Every time spent with God, in God, is never a waste of time. Don't take your wilderness for granted. God is using it to purify your motives. He's using it to purify your gift. God is using it to strip you of every impurity and set you aside and consecrate you for his purpose, for his divine plan. In fact, at the end, you would be grateful that you went through a wilderness experience because of what it brought out of you. It's not a waste of time. It is not. Let me just pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone listening to me right now going through some kind of wilderness experience, things they don't understand, things they wish was better, with every question mark in their mind. Father, I ask, Lord, that you reveal yourself to them. Comfort them. Minister to this heart, O oh God. Touch every heart. <laughs> Show, you, show them, Lord, that you're still there. <laughs> show them that you're in this. Show them that you are present with them. Show them that you, your presence is in their lives. Thank you, Father, for revealing yourself in ways that you alone can. Lord, and as they wait on you, let their strength be renewed. Let there be grace poured out in new dimensions to know you better, to see you better, and to follow after you in truth. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, King of Glory. Have your way, be glorified, magnify, glorify yourself, magnify yourself in the life of every listener today. We give you praise and glory, mighty God. You, we know that you are able to do exceeding abundantly far above we could ever ask to this end we give you praise we give you honor we give you glory thank you for doing a new thing blessed be your name king of glory in jesus name we pray god bless you